Will Boeing build the 797? Maybe a better question would be, should Boeing build the 797? Originally proposed as a replacement for the 757 and 767, the 797 or NMA would serve to fill the gap between smaller 737 variants and larger wide bodies in Boeing's lineup. Smaller variants of the 797 could even replace the aging 737 program, which is almost 60 years old. First, let's look at reasons why building the NMA would be a good idea. Boeing pulled the plug on 757 production in 2004 and didn't re-engine or upgrade the plane, a decision that the company will forever regret. This meant that airlines operating long and thin routes using the 757 will have to find or already have found replacement aircraft to fly these routes, most notably the A321. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the point? Airbus has dominated this sector of the market for medium-sized long-range planes already with the A321 XLR, which can fly up to 11 hours thanks to its increased range as a result of additional fuel capacity. But the A320 family has the largest backlog of any aircraft type, around 7,200. If we divide this number by the amount made per month, approximately 45, then we get 160. Divide this by 12 and we get just over 13 years. Add to that new orders within that time frame, and airlines who have just ordered the plane could be waiting up to 20 years for their new jet. But if Boeing jumps in now, they could potentially certify a new plane in half that time. This means airlines looking for a 757 replacement would think twice about jumping in with the A321 XLR and might reconsider a Boeing alternative, especially if technological advancements continue to be made to make the plane cheaper to buy and run, and even more so if loyal Boeing customers don't want to buy the Airbus. This could potentially be a brilliant opportunity for Boeing to secure at least some market share in this sector. Let's not forget that Boeing has a huge gap in their selection at the minute, with many operators of the 767 planning to retire most of them by 2030. Add to this the many 757 operators who are switching their old planes with A321 XLRs, it is clear Boeing has a huge gap in their lineup. Of course, the Dreamliner was brought into service to replace the aging 767s, but the 757 has left a hole that needs patching. The NMA would achieve this. As I mentioned earlier, Boeing would be stupid not to at least make an effort to compete with Airbus A321s, which are selling like hotcakes at the minute. But like I alluded to earlier, Boeing needs to replace their 737 program with something other than just modernizing with a few engine and winglet upgrades. The Airbus A220 could potentially be a threat to Boeing's narrow-body business, as Airbus could easily stretch the existing A220 to compete directly with the 737 variants. By building a new mid-size airplane, Boeing could modify the jet to cover multiple angles of the market, and this is why cutting the 737 program and replacing it with a fresh new aircraft would kill two birds with one stone as the 737 program is based on a very outdated design and needs to go at some point anyway. But building an NMA wouldn't just benefit commercial airlines, but the military as well, specifically the transportation of high-ranking government officials. The existing Air Force II program uses modified 757s, which excels at short takeoffs thanks to its high thrust-to-weight ratio and oversized engines, meaning it can operate from way more airports that don't have very lengthy runways. These C-32s have been in operation since 1998, and at some point in the future, will need replacing. Enter the 797. If Boeing designed the plane with longer landing gear than the 737, then bigger, more powerful engines would fit below the wing, ticking the box for short takeoffs. If you want to know more about replacing Air Force Two, then I recommend you check out this video by Kobe Explains, linked below. Cargo companies would do well out of the 797 too. Cargo variants usually follow a few years after the commercial jet, but as Boeing is stopping the production of 767 freighters soon, an NMA would bring
bridge the gap between 737 freighters and 777 freighters too. Pushing a new jet into the air cargo market is a great idea, as there will be plenty of demand from companies like FedEx, who still operate older and less efficient planes. Okay, so I've listed some pros for the NMA, now the part that you're all here for. The cons. Starting with competition. As I've already stated, Boeing would need to at least try to compete with the A321. But how viable is that? When Dave Calhoun took over the company a few years ago, he scrapped existing 797 proposals. This made sense, as the world was recovering from the pandemic, and Boeing was recovering from the pair of 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019. But that left the door wide open for Airbus and their A321s. The entry into service date of a new mid-size airplane would be impacted by increased scrutiny from the FAA as a result of the MAX crashes and the Alaska Airlines door plug blowout. This effect has been seen on the 777X project, amongst other factors, which is already six years behind schedule. And finally, the biggest con of them all, price. Some estimates suggest the price of developing this new plane could easily exceed $25 billion, with probable budgets going all the way up to $50 billion. So spending a fortune on development when you're up against monstrous competition might result in Boeing losing money rather than making money. So what do you think? I would love to hear your view on the subject, and a comments war would be fun to say the least. If you made it this far, then thank you. If you enjoy what I do and want to help the channel grow, then go ahead and subscribe. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.